Hello, welcome to uh, that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. Uh, I've got the notorious SID and Chris Stuck with me, finally, all together. We're back. Back and stronger. The band is back together. <laughs> well, it is. It's in, nice in a, to be back. In a, back in a world of reunions, it does feel like we're, you know, back together, back in the pub, just waiting for a lovely Guinness to arrive as well. But, um, it's been weird doing these on Zoom throughout the holidays. It's all a bit fractious, isn't it? You're away, yeah. I'm away, you know, Sid's is away. Yeah. It's just one of those things. And like, we finally got the band back together. And I think the, this is this feels like the start of the season for me. <laughs> Good. Uh, it certainly feels um, less stressful because the last time we, uh, obviously, well, you rigged up. I was uh, rigging last time. He was setting all up uh, on a FaceTime. Got there in the end, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So and after was a little bit comical as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit comical because the thing is for me is like obviously there's a little. I don't know if you know all this, Chris, but you're <laughs> obviously a little bit more well versed than me. But there's a little SD card that you have to pull out, and then you have to put it in the laptop. And bear in mind, I haven't used the laptop pretty much my entire life. I've managed yeah. to get away with not using the laptop. Yeah. Um, so now I'm dragging and dropping, but I don't. You know, I reckon with a mouse, I'd be totally fine with that. I know what a drag and a drop is, but when you kind of put it in and then you have to pull it in, I don't know whether it, it was a bit dodgy. It was laptop, dodgy, yeah. It? But like, yeah. Why has this happened? Because I, I was told the last episode you two were together on holiday. Yeah, we were. Yeah. But you still got to drag it and drop it to someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I can't be uploading stuff. And then you had to rig up your own cameras like this yeah, as well, yeah, which is yeah. kind of you with the tripod's quite funny to watch, isn't it? Is, isn't it? We've, we've, got, got, we've got a yeah. few family members in to make sure it was all correct behind the screen. And yeah, listen, it came out well. We had a laugh. It was yeah. good. We had a really yeah, it was good. It was quite a bit you missed, actually. Yeah, so catch me up. What, what's what's yeah, happened? Uh, obviously, yeah, the first bit was um, obviously I failed to uh, register my own team in our own um, fantasy Premier League, mm. uh, FPL League. Uh, so I, yeah, obviously the, the name was that Peter Crouch podcast league, and I wasn't in it. Are you now? Oh, I am in it. Now. Yeah, are you in now? Are you sure? I'm doing quite well, I think. Doing all right. Yeah, you done well, really well. Yeah, I, right? I've you done I, really well. Yeah, we will <laughs> we'll talk about Same this. <laughs> I've thrown the triple captain in already. Oh, he hasn't. It's gone oh, early. Harland. So for, the, for 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 let me get this right. So for last last week. So obviously not the weekend that you've just had. Like the weekend before. Yeah. Ipswich City. Mm -hmm. I thought. Here I'm we going go. in early. Because I'm hearing that there isn't many double game weeks and things like that. Personally, I didn't want us to get involved in this fantasy football because yeah. I think it's a totally it's different sport. It's too stressful, man. It's stressful <clears throat> enough just doing the predictions that we do. But yeah, I went for it. The triple captain, it's, I think, it's paid, paid off. Paid off. Got over 100 points that, that weekend. Did see that. Mm. What's your name? What's your team uh, name? Cr Crouching Tigers. Hidden. Yeah, so I have seen you. Mm. And what about you, Sid? The notorious SID. It's a bit boring, isn't it? It's, yeah. Stick I, to the I, I rushed. I rushed. Yeah. I should have. Yeah. I've gone for Grillingham. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Grillingham. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that plays out throughout the season. My prediction is we will all lose interest in that league throughout, uh, throughout yeah, the season. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. at the moment, oh, I, think we're, I think we're joint top yeah, 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 which is yeah. you know, interesting. Yeah, one of the uh, most interesting things that came out the, uh, the other day was Damien Delaney. It's an old interview uh, of his dream dinner guests. Keith Richards, obviously. Yeah. Good. Stalin. Uh, Genghis Khan, Chairman Mao and Napoleon. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember yeah, we went through... Um, <laughs> why Napoleon, I wonder? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, or uh, Chairman Mao. Uh, did, but do you remember we went through a period in this podcast of of kind of dream guests for this podcast? And then we, the aim was we'd try to get them on. We managed to get Elton John. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still waiting for Marco Robbie. Unless, Margot Robbie. Yeah. We had yeah. Ronaldo, original yeah. Brazilian, Brazilian Ronaldo. Ronaldo. We haven't, we haven't had him with. on yet, have we? Uh, and also the other one was... Uh, Kim Jong-un. Yeah. Kim Jong-un, yeah. yeah. Which is, um, again, is a Which actually, he'd, he'd, he'd got great at his pinpoint. <laughs> <pie. laughs> <laughs> is there any context to this? No real backstory. Just, he said, Jim did a guess, and that, that was it. That was I it. take it you discussed who yours would be? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we said we'd, we'd so think we of it for this. Didn't we? Yeah, so we'd, you know what, now you're here, let's do it for next week. Well, I always see... Yeah, but you haven't given it any thought. No, um, no. But Sid's often I see an Instagram post go up with you, and I think actually you you often have quite a sort of dreamy um, dinner table going on just on the regular. Bobby Zamora, John Terry, mm. who else is he yeah. always with? It's mainly I always see them too. Uh, who else am I with? 
I mean, this is the man. This is the this is the uh, the A list. This is the <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't he doesn't say them often, does he? And then it's only when say Alan Carr uploads a little video of of said dinner that yeah. you suddenly get a little insight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a crouchy. Yeah, well, I'm not plan, big yeah. on the old pictures on Instagram, are I? No. Uh, yeah. Um, Can I you think... confirm one thing just on that? Are you on Instagram at the moment? Yeah, is yeah, it... I am on Instagram, but I'm not like. I don't upload loads of pictures of me and what I'm up to and all that. Do you have the app on your phone? I do have it on my phone. Oh, yeah. shit. Because it used to be, I know someone else was doing your Instagram yeah. for you. Mm. And I used to put things up on Instagram thinking, oh, Crouchy will never see that. Yeah. But then I'll Sid's joined the podcast and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to get seen now and Sid's will see things right, I put okay. on there. Mm. I probably will. I probably won't see it. Yeah. I'm not like big on it, you know. You're not on there. The old school. <laughs> <laughs> you love Twitter, though. I do love Twitter. You love yeah, Twitter. Big fan of it. Big fan of it. Um, okay, one so, thing din so, so the dinner party stuff will come back to next week or something? I think so, yeah. Let's all, put, let's all put our list of, right, of, four, roll over, yeah, of right. four together. Um, one of the biggest things that came out last week was um, a go-karting race between uh, Wayne Bridge and Sammy Hoopier. I heard about this. Yeah. yeah. So I think what we should do now, I should probably like, because Wayne Bridge is in. So th th king. this thing was who would win in a go-karting race yeah, it was between... Be, yeah. You think Wayne... Wayne Bridge is better. Yeah, I've seen Bridgie do it, and he's literally started behind twenty of us and won comfortably. Unbelievable. And you idea. think Sammy Hoopier would? I think he's the best I've seen on the footballing circuit. Let's, start, let's get it on. But have you seen Wayne Bridge go kart? No, no. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And I've not seen Sammy. Not, I wouldn't like to back <laughs> against him, but if I'm going to put anyone next to him, yeah. the best I've seen, Sammy Hoopier. Okay, and you're thinking we can maybe make this happen? Yeah, yeah I think so. I guarantee both of them don't mirror signal manoeuvre when they pull out the pit stop. That's for sure. <laughs> Seatbelt on first. <laughs> oh my God, hold on a minute. I just text lining this up, Yeah. right, with Sammy. I said, uh, mate, I might, I might give you a shout on the podcast. I thought it was going to be a live shout, right? Anyway, he's gone, uh, I'm up for a race anytime. <gasps> I'm actually at the track right now. Can you believe that? Yeah, he just said, look. I'm up for a race any time, mate. Wait, he's I'm up on chance. the racing the track chances? at the moment. What are the chances he's there? Is he that into it? I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> 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 so now, you, now they put a cat amongst the pigeons, isn't it? Oh. Well, Bridgie could be scared now. <laughs> Forward it to Bridgie. <laughs> just say, are you worried? <laughs> This Game is on. on. <laughs> Game on. So he's listened, obviously, to last week's... Uh, to episode and uh, he's up straight away he's within two minutes he's stepped back I'm oh up for a race God. anytime wow. with, the, okay. with the strong arm right and he's took a picture of the track okay this has got legs this could be massive yeah. so, so wow. we're talking about a race day yeah they're the main event yeah just one on one we won't have anyone interfering that's the problem with go-karting it just takes no, one yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate I, I love go-karting right but if you're on a track where there's just other strangers it's frustrating. You know, I think sometimes that makes it because that slows other people down Then you've got to try and manoeuvre to get around them to then catch the next there's person. There's always one tosser that just like comes yeah. ploughing into yeah, you. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. true. That's like, true. Well, I think we'll we, should, we should have a race as yeah. the warm-up yep. and then get Sammy and, and Wayne as the main event. I yeah. love it. Uh, this has got legs. We'll, yep. So that's something we'll continue. Can't right. believe Sammy's bang up for it. So that's, that's, yep. that's on. Yep. Uh, the other thing was, I don't know if you heard about uh, and Sid's and his Fulham boys. Um, the lucky hand. The lucky hand, yeah. Off the mannequin. We had this story. Right, what's this? Basically, Fulham, we had a, t we had a, a trip to Portugal. We ended up in an establishment where um, there were some female dancers. Uh, they got quite close to members if they wanted to. Or, or you could just go to the bar and just have a drink. <laughs> Doing what side of the You make it sound worse than it is. Are you, talk <laughs> are you talking about strippers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> there were females in there that could get a bit closer if you wanted to. Yeah. For money. Of course. Yeah. So uh, anyway, there was a mannequin there. I, I, I sat back on this couch. There was a mannequin there, but behind me that was just obviously doing nothing. I unscrewed the hand. Somehow this <laughs> hand come home with me that night um, and it lasted the rest of the trip and then it went on every away trip to the stadiums, okay, for the remainder of the season. <laughs> and uh, there was pictures of it so that the, the, um, the staff would go beforehand set the kit up and they would take this hand because it was in the medical box and they would take a picture of it lined up like literally standing <laughs> up against the post at Old Trafford or on the football at um, St James's Park mm. um, so there are some pictures they're on an old laptop that someone's uh, going to grab for me but I have got 
uh, there's another part of the story. So this man, this this hand, um, it basically uh, was with the two staff from Fulham, Dangerous Dave and Liam. <laughs> Dangerous Dave. <laughs> right. So these guys, because uh, we uh, had Damien Duff and a few Irish dads at Fulham, these guys bought an old ice cream van at the end of the season because it was 2012, the Euros, and they were going to drive from London to uh, to Europe where it was. Uh, in this old ice cream van. So as it is with footballers and dressing rooms, this got legs. So do you remember uh, Yanni? Is it Yanni? The, the guy who used to pimp all the um, cars up on Sky? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Is it Yanni yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like yeah. that? Does all, like, I think you're he, right. He puts the film on the cars and um, wraps them more and stuff like that. Yeah. So I've got some... Pimp, right. Yeah, it was, it was, like, yeah, it was yeah. one of those car technicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got some pictures here. So this hand went with these guys because they followed the Irish contingent because they knew uh, Glenn Whelan and a few of lads uh, from other clubs because uh, Dangerous is Irish. Uh, so I've got some pictures here. On, and I, <laughs> I've got some pictures here and I'm going to show you. Uh, and this is, this is class. So I first of all, I want to show you the ice cream van. So this is the ice cream van. So this is the one the players have bought. This right? is the players, the players have bought. bought the players well. bought this. They took it. Uh, that is, that is uh, Yanni there in the ice cream van. Um, and then... That's, that's sorry, the sorry, that was the hand there. And then this is it after. Okay, so wow. it's, it's wrapped up. It's got <laughs> all the lads around the uh, the ice cream van. Okay, so the lads who bought it are featured on the ice cream. Yeah, van. so I think there's John Waters there. I think there might be Stephen Hunt. Ooh. I think Wheelow's on there. Uh, but they've they've kept it as an ice cream van. Still, it's, it's just it's like an, ice an cream Irish van. ice cream yeah, van. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine they've driven this over to Europe. It broke down several times, but it made its way there. It parked itself outside the Irish team hotel. Okay, yep. it was all on Sky. It was on there. It was massive. So, so I'm just going to so flip just, through just some pictures. very quickly on the, I guess we're calling it the Irish cream van. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> is, did, did they manage to change the music on it to sort of Irish songs as well? Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. I don't think there's video because this is going back 2012, but so there will be something. such a good idea. Brilliant. It's unbelievable. So this... Actually, after the tournament, it was parked on my drive for about four weeks. There was an oil leak on my drive there. It was, it was a nightmare. It eventually you went... on your drive? Yeah, weeks. yeah. It's, I mean, if you're not watching it, obviously, the, the we'll clips of this and social pictures, pictures up. be up. However, it is the Irish flag on an ice cream van. It, it, before, it's head to toe, The before yeah. picture is a normal ice cream van. And now this thing is fully Irish. Yeah. It's... And all the lads, all the players signed it. There. They had pictures of, uh, of, of it outside. That there's even um, there's there's the the main man there. The is boys, that, yeah. There's uh, Trapattoni there. He is Trapattoni uh, with the with the two guys in the uh, in the driver's seat. So let's get back to the hand, shall yeah. we? So this is this is the the, the famous the hand, um, and uh, it obviously yeah. had, a, Made, had a had a great time. Made its way round, yeah. Uh, it's so it's there. on the red carpet there. Um, red carpet. This is the uh, Shane Long's guitar. Uh, all Taylor the players guitar. have signed. I don't know what that sort of is. So, there, so the hand just goes to various places and yeah. does things. Holding, holding tickets yeah. there. Uh, nice. Oh. There's, there's our oh, mate Wheeler yeah, holding the hand. Yeah. I think we've got one of Shane Long with it Playing there. His guitar tickets. So it, yeah, it made its way. Look, there's there's one of the lads boots in this the is dressing room. 2012. It's made it to. Brilliant. All from that little place. All from that. All from that establishment. All from there. It went. Uh, it actually as well. It actually made its way to Vegas. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. on someone's stag do. Wow. Oh, I don't know what it got up to over there, but no. I so, don't think it made its way back from there. Where, I was going to say, where's the hand oh, now? Bangkok, now? Sorry, where's the hand now? I, th I don't think it Bangkok made its. Bangkok, 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 but it must be out there somewhere, yeah, right? The hand, you reckon? Yeah. Oh. So that was the story on the hand. So uh, yeah, um, we'll stick these pictures up. And it's Sid, the story. idea of buying an ice cream van, I absolutely love that. Yeah, and doing it up. Yeah. Blaring out songs out of it, like yeah. it's a really nice. Touch, Do you know at Portsmouth we we had the A team band? Yes. We, used to call us the a, we used to call ourselves the A team, and uh, we we got a three wheeler. And, did you? And did it all up? Yeah, pimped it all up. That was a good one. And how did you do that? Up? Yeah. So here, as you see here, this is the original picture of it. Uh, that one, um, and then it we turned it into uh, this, uh, the A team. Uh, that <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Basically, it's an A team three wheeler. 
Uh, and that's it on the pitch. It's literally Sean Davis there. There's a few of us. That's Sean Davis driving it. It's me this in the background. Great. But it's the same colours. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've eight, we 18 free wheeler, but that's Sean Davis driving it. And it had a big speaker on the top playing out the, the 18 music. Uh, but we've had, had the best sound system you've ever seen in it. So th- wasn't the story was that the, the loser of something or... or worst player in training player. voted uh, on the Friday would be driving it into yeah, the game. Yeah, but they had so. to take it away and they had to add something. Add something So to it, it, it yeah. ended up having like, alloy wheels and spoilers yeah. and dice. It could be mm. anything, couldn't it? It cost, about, it cost about 500 quid, the, the actual car, but I think it had about 20 grand. This, so, this yeah. is something every, <laughs> every club must have done, right? This is. Do you reckon it's still a thing? Like, sort of whip uh, round to get a vehicle? I don't and, know now. Mm. It's great. I love the fact you can buy an ice cream van on the open market. I've never really thought of doing yeah. that. Yeah. What things like there? taxis and things like that. Like a tank. You know, like if you buy a taxi, can you just drive down a yeah, well, taxi lane? I don't know what the rules are. It's like if you own an ice cream van, are you actually legally allowed to play the music? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> well, not if you're not if you haven't got any ice creams in it. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Long. Long. <laughs> I'd say so. It, what, no, ultimate it's, shit housery on kids <laughs> to drive around they all get an ice cream buzzing, van you go, with no ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, should we get to the pod? Let's get <laughs> what we're we talking about today, Crouchy. Uh, do you know what we're, get, we're talking about today, Chris? Is like, it's the roots into football management. There's so much made of like kind of... You know, you don't even the, the, the top players, at elite level players, don't always make it as the best managers. And I think, um, you know... the. Where has the player manager gone? You know, that kind of thing. Mm. Like, oh, will we ever see player managers again? I mean, it feels quite nostalgic. Mm. I remember, you know, I was a, kind of going to Chelsea when Glenn Hoddle and Rude Hullet kind mm. of were, were the first ones yeah. there. And it felt, um, it was amazing to watch them make substitutions is, is, from the pitch. But, but is, yeah. is the player manager something that helps bridge the gap between players that are just retiring but still feel they have a bit left in the game but want to get into management. Was it kind of that just that sort of bridging period, would you say? Yeah, I think I think you kind of help out, help out the team until they can function themselves, if you know what I mean. I think definitely with Glenn and Rude Hullet, yeah. when I watched them play, they were the best players. You know, it was Glenn Hoddle. I remember when he first came to Chelsea, he was playing a sweeper role. And he was kind of just oh, yeah. came from Swindon, and he played just behind like a back four, and he was just getting the ball off the keep and just spraying these mm. passes, and it was just beautiful to watch. And then Rude, the same thing. When Rude Hullet came, he kind of played in that sweeper role, and then it was just like he was too good. Like Glenn, obviously, was I think was manager, so he went for, he went from player manager to manager. Yeah, brought Rude Hullet in, tried to play him in that role that he was playing because he was the only player that could have done it. Mm. Was brilliant at it, but then he realised that he still had legs in him, didn't he, Rude? Yeah. He could still run forward and get goals and create. And it was just, I think he was too, he was almost wasted in that position. And then he ended up being player manager, didn't he? Well, and the last one was Jean Luc Vialli. Yes. Yeah, in right. 1999. The, the last official, the, the last manager. official, last permanent player manager in the Premier League was Jean Luc So do you have to declare and he was yourself as well? Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. Was, he, was a, he was a brilliant player. But how does it work? Do you have to declare yourself player manager at the start of the season? So you're almost registering as... Because you must have to register as manager, Yeah, yeah, register right? yourself yeah. as a manager but, and a player. And a, yeah, a player. I, think, I think it was different back then because you didn't need the qualifications as you do now. Mm. So I think that's why it stopped. Are we going to see the, is that the end of it? Are we, you know... That, I, can't see I think it's a sad back. state of affairs, personally. But I think it's something, there was something very special about a player manager. Do you know what? I spoke to someone the other day in non-league and Ian Selly do you remember Ian Selly the old midfield player yeah, for Arsenal. Arsenal yeah he's player manager at Leatherhead is he? now so he must be in his 50s wow, surely I watching him when I was do you remember? he's still playing he was he, well he's manager but he's registered he, you know, he put himself on the bench he's player manager there's so many issues with this though isn't there because who manages the manager if they're playing do you see well, what I mean? What, what happens does the assistant manager on the bench mm. at that point gain an extra authority can you even say anything to the manager if you're playing alongside like it's a weird dynamic that isn't it I think the weirdest thing has got to be making the substitution like, you, can, <laughs> yeah. you can change the formation on the pitch can't you but then you need to make a sub as a manager you're going to obviously have to run over at some point to the sideline mention it to your number two and then somehow tell right. your teammate that he's coming off start warming up <laughs> My thing as well, imagine you, imagine you pass the ball into someone like and it goes under their foot or something like that and you go, fuck that. <laughs> Getting him off. <laughs> it's crap. 
<laughs> it's oh, true. But when you're fun. playing, do you then lose? Do you lose the manager side to it at that point? Do you see what I mean? It must be hard. I mean, I know what I was like when I was playing and I was very caught up in what I was doing yeah. rather than the team. And yeah. I think, I don't know if that's a striker thing or what, but I was very caught up in I know I'm, I do, everyone just does their own job, you know? Mm. I don't know how you manage a formation or... A, yeah. You know, and you can definitely see what's happening with the other team and think, oh, now how do we counteract this? You know, and that's obviously in your head. But I don't know how you would watch everyone else's game and see how they are, they're they playing. I mean, what would you do, Crouchy, if you look to the right and you're seeing Pulis doing sort of star jumps and things, getting ready, oh, to, getting come ready to come on? Also, my other issue with it is, could you potentially bring yourself on in anger? Do you see what I mean? Like, you've got riled up on the side of the pitch mm -hmm. and actually you're just making the substitution the same way that a fan would go, like, get me on, like, I, I could do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's reactionary feels like that's why tactical. i think it, it can't work <clears throat> because it's too emotional isn't it it's too, you're you're probably making it for the wrong reasons mm. you know rather but, than a tactical one it's more of a i'm, I'm gonna get on there and just start kicking a few i, I know. think you still see glimpses of it though the potential player manager role player coach role when you see training ground clips where the manager gets involved yeah. so i saw it with rooney recently with yeah. plymouth and he takes the ball and it's almost like he's pissed off at everyone around him so showing how it happens literally calls for this ball turns and pings the it's perfect mm. to the lad up front who I think fucked up the shot yeah. at that point but you see those glimpses and you think god like they can still do a job yeah, yeah. Oh, look, look at the most recent so ones of... Alonso uh, yeah yeah Chevy. yeah pinging it around Peter at Leverkusen Man, uh, Zidane yeah. he was making people look silly uh, who was Glenn, there's, a, there's a good one of Glenn Hoddle when he was at Swindon doing it um, as well. Tom Franco Zola at West Ham. Oh, there's, yeah, there's you know, I remember, I, remember um, I think Bellamy had to pull John Franco Zola and said, you know, when you're doing free kicks at the end of training, it's just like you've got to stop joining in because it's, it's disheartening for the rest of the lads, you know. <laughs> it's so good. You know, like, I remember, like, um, even, even away with England, the pinnacle of English football when Glenn was manager and the lads were like, you know, trying to take corners, can't get it over the first man, you know, the odd times, Glenn's like, look, just do this, and uh, he, he's literally calling where he's going to ping the ball, and it's kind of disheartening, and for, for the rest of the players, that mm. maybe aren't on, on that level. Well, I can imagine it being quite frustrating for players that become managers and sort of look around and don't understand why people can't, can't mm, do what they're can't asking. It, yeah. I can imagine Gerard being in that position. I do feel like that with Gerard, yeah, because I mean, you know, like I, everyone felt it when he was a player, it, you know, it felt like, you know, he at times he'd be like, what am I playing with? You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Because <laughs> he was so good. Mm -hmm. He was so good. Yeah. And I think, you know, how are you, how he's kind of managed to get his head around coaching mm -hmm. kind of inferior players to, to what he was. And now, let's be honest, every I think every player he's managed so far would have been inferior to him. Mm -hmm. I don't know there's anyone who would even be on a level to him. So, so is it hard then, do you think, being a player, becoming manager... And having to learn to yeah. dial that side of you down 100%. a bit. Well, you'd have to dial it down, I think, especially with the modern day player. Yeah, you know, they're, they're not going to take that kind of criticism. I don't yeah. I feel it's a lot, a little bit more. And I think it's a generational thing, isn't it? People aren't as, aren't as, I don't want to say aren't as tough, but they they, they maybe don't take criticism as well, yeah. or as or have had to take criticism as yeah. much as they did. Certainly, in the years gone past, two names that straight away jump out. I remember Paul Merson was one when he went to Walsall, yeah. uh, and he, he he openly said it when he when he eventually then come out of the job, and he was like, I just couldn't accept that some players, maybe it's his fault for going to that level, but that he said that was the only job that he could get at the time. Um, so Merson was one of them, and I think Roy Keane probably had that as well. Yeah, I think mm. he struggled with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I played with Paul Merson at Villa, and um, you know I. Even in trading there, like he, yeah, he was ruthless with people that weren't kind of on his level. He was like, sometimes I remember he would he would just take the balls and just go right, we're going and we'll do we're doing something else, you know, and change what the managers or the coach has done as a session. He would just mm. take it, take a new session and do it himself. So I guess this is something that you must learn on the courses, and we should get into that because that blows my mind. That whole route that you have to take and the routes that you've got to decide to take but then when you talk about players not um, perhaps getting into manager not understanding how people don't have the same discipline or skill what about the clip that's been doing the rounds for a couple of weeks now Vincent Company and and as a Burnley player yeah. and you see how the players react around that 
is is that what did that look like to you, Crouchy and Sis? Was that like company using anger in in kind of the right way, or did it just look like he'd lost control a bit? If you were a player on that pitch, how would you read that situation? I mean, I, I, I've seen that so many times yeah. on a pitch. Like it's not. I don't think that's the first time we'd ever see that. No. You know. I, like I've seen it at elite level as well, you know. I remember Capello going absolutely mental. I think it might have been Theo Walcott um, for some reason. I can't remember. We were tra- at a training ground game, and he was. I think he kept coming. He might have been coming coming inside con- constantly, or there was an issue where, and he just screamed, screaming at him, you know, like a child. Mm. And I think that's what happened with with. I have seen that before, but I don't know if it felt like a bit much didn't it and I think uh, maybe he was kind of muttering under his breath but you know, he kind of lost it there and he, he, the anger just came out but I've seen that so many times in, in football over the years like, that does, yeah. it does go on it does it, well, it happens yeah daily very, basis yeah very regular but that's the one thing that they that they can't teach you like we done our coaching badges together mm-hmm. um, me and Pete with the Welsh FA didn't we it was yeah, great did, yeah. but yeah, bro- loved it. they can't recreate an environment where that's going to happen. That's just that's just down to do your they personality. Teach you this stuff. So so in in dealing in those situations, do they? Let's let's get into the badges then. So obviously you've got an understanding and a grounding in the game of being players, and so when you then go to learn, because it's kind of learning how to be a manager, learning mm. how to be a coach, yeah. right? Is that the point of the badges, or are the badges just a kind of? Health and safety. Thing. No, 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 like, not what? at all. No, I, I, I found it like I, I've got far more respect for coaches and managers now than I did have when I was a player. Mm. Where like it's, it's, it's tough to be able to deal with so many different people, so many different moving parts, the numbers, the sessions, keeping it interesting. But you know, what are you working on? What's the ultimate goal? The small sided games. Like they, they, there's a hell of a lot more to coaching than me than meets the eye. But then obviously you got to throw in the added thing of like you know real life you know people's you know i'm not coming in today because i'm ill or you know mm. that something's happened around that you you know or you've lost all the all the money you the finances have got you know the players aren't getting paid that kind of thing but you're like, learning this stuff on the badge you well you learn to... the higher you go the more you learn that stuff i think kind of the pro license is more about dealing with agents <clears throat> dealing with the it's more up, you know, people it? upstairs yeah, yeah dealing with the off-field stuff but so I'm how not... does it talk us through these sessions how do, how does it work are you in a what I'm imagining in is like a school hall and you've made your pat lunch for the day and you're, you know, you're very you're similar. There and, and, and it, like, it's a bit like that. that. It is feels it, like you're really? going back to school. Yeah, yeah, it genuinely does feel yeah. like you're going back to school. There's a lot of classroom based stuff that, you know, uh, that they put on sessions wise. And there's a lot of stuff on the grass as well. Because obviously that's where footballers or coaches <laughs> feel, feel like that's the environment they want to be at. They, you know, so getting a pair of boots on and a whistle just gives you a little bit more power or authority. And, and it's all Joe. You know what the biggest thing is? It's all that you can you can half see what player what the player is going to be like as a manager. In just terms of personality, like so, so, so Steven Gerrard might be completely different to an Arsene Wenger. Do you know what I mean? It's you can half see like what kind of. So, so how many people in the in the room that you're in are players becoming managers? Or is, is it well, like, like, 50, like, 50, when or? we were in there, it was it was it was interesting because like it was quite a lot of kind of I would say. English league players were going over there to do it because you know Vieira went over there and done it. Thierry Henry, yeah. Sol Campbell, Mikel Arteta. Um, Mikel Arteta. And this is the Welsh. Went up to the Welsh yeah. one, yeah. And obviously, you know, I was hearing good reports about it. You know, so we ended up doing mm. it, doing it there, and um, and it was it was it was brilliant. And I have to I have to say, all the people like involved there, like the the the, the assessors, the the, the Various coaches that we had, it was was really interesting, but it's very much like back to school. Like so just talk us through it. Um, so, you, so you do a like a welcome thing, right? And you're all in a room, and it's like, right? So you're all hoping to get your whatever it is, B license. Yeah. And you're looking around, and maybe Henri's. Is, is it how many? But people? it's like that. How like many you'd people? Have, you'd have right. you'd have someone like you'd have someone like that. Was sixty? You? Do you reckon maybe? Yeah, sixty. But you'd have you'd have someone from like the League of Wales there sitting next to yeah. Sol Campbell, do you yeah, know what I mean? Or, yeah. And it, it's a very mixed bag. You know, I remember there were two women over from, yeah. girls over from the US, yep. coaching in, like, they wanted, yeah. hoping to be coaching, you know, women's soccer out there. Mm. So it was like mad, like, kind of scenario of different people from different walks yeah. of life. And they take you out of your comfort zone straight away, don't they? So they make you get up one by one at the very start and introduce yourself. 
really? and where you're from because someone from the States might not know Ooh. who we are. They might, not, they might not know. You don't know from there or New Zealand because they get them all from around the world. And it's actually surprising people that you think, oh, it'll be fine with this. They actually get up and they, you can see them get blushing a little bit. Totally. Or, yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah. I remember a player, right? He must have had about 500 league games. Do you remember yeah. this when yeah. I was partnered with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we basically, they took us down into the um, dressing room and um, so we've got a plan and it was basically you watch a game and it was like, right, you're the team at half time and you go into the dressing room after the game. So you watch a half of football and you say I'm Atletico Madrid and we're playing against Real Madrid and we are 2-0 down and the scenario is you've just watched the first half and you have to go down into the thing but you've got a partner and you do kind of seven and a half minutes as if yeah. it's a half-time team tour. You do to an empty minutes. room? No, to, no, to, to, the, to the room rest, of, the of the rest oh, of the, to the rest of the coaches, right? That's more acting than... Well, no, right, but that's, like, the thing is, that is the scenario that you are going to be in, yeah. right? You've got a team there and you're going to have to deliver a team talk to counteract what you've just seen or you're 2-0 down. How are you going to react to this? Mm. So was it just a scenario? Did you have to watch a half? I watched the whole half, yeah. Watched the yeah. half. Me and my partner... And then I remember him going, um, I think he might have gone first. And, he, and he, he, as he was talking, he went, I've gone. He went, uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've completely gone. I can't do this. And I went, fucking hell. <laughs> so, now, so now, oh my God, I can't believe it. So then I, now I've got to feel kind of the rest of his time, plus the time that I, I've uh, had planned for my bit. And I was like, oh my God. So I just kind of had to feel and then do deliver my bit and, mm. but I mean we've been on this situation stage Some where you've got to feel and you know you be we've been in front of Wembley Arena and gone like yeah. lads have gone right you've got to feel for five six minutes yeah. like I've never thought of throwing to you for a team talk like, that would, yeah, but the thing is like, 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 normally we just get you to do the old <laughs> 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 yeah, that always goes down well <laughs> but you know what he this is a guy who's played, been around football his entire life been yeah. around football his whole life and he just totally yeah. fine in all other situations other than that one at that moment. Yeah. And also you have to use the tactics board. That tactics board might be one that's on the wall. It might be one that's, you know, like the one that's, that's on the, like the, um, the stand, tripod sort of stand. Yeah. So you have to, you have to, they make, like there's no, there's no like, right, it's, you, you have to pick it up and move it to where everyone can see. It sounds simple, but mm. when you're not thinking of it, you might put it somewhere where two or three players can't see it. So they're noticing it, they're just not like noting it all down. So, so the invigilators are, are making little notes throughout this, yeah. basically going what you could... Yeah. And then as a pair, are you sort of encouraged to be good cop, bad cop, or are you just told to manage however you want? Yeah, or you, want. you do whatever you like. And then do you, do you feel a pressure, because you're suddenly playing at being manager, right? Do you feel a pressure to act like a manager that you have in mind? Like, do you suddenly try and become more sincere or more angry? I think you need more, to be more authentic. I think you would than, default than you to are. being quite funny. That's the thing. But that's like, the thing. Like, so that is exactly what, how I, when I was thinking about like doing this, I was thinking to myself, how are my team going to not kind of, how are they going to take me seriously, right? <laughs> my entire life it. has been based around actually not being that serious. Like really. Yeah. I, and I thought to myself, how am I going to, how am I going to check? Like, I have to become kind of a different person because to gain respect, I think, you do have to be a bit more aloof and I find that difficult. Mm. Yeah, and I think in that particular exam as well, it's not like, you, obviously, because it's a bit of a test and a bit of a kind of situation-based experience, it's not like you've been on the training ground for weeks before no, and, and those players would know yeah. like the sincere side of mm. you. I just find that a crazy, crazy test to have to go into a situation and just like yeah. do your style. Yeah. But I also think you find yourself like as a, that's why I think sometimes you know if you if you've been a big player and you go straight into a big job, yeah, you kind of you are going to make mistakes. There's no like ifs or buts. Yeah. Like you're going to make mistakes yeah. in your first job, yeah. a million percent. Yeah. Whereas so if you do go kind of down the leagues and and I think that's why sometimes. You know, the greatest managers, like a list here of like Mourinho, Nagelsmann, Ranić, Thomas Frank, Graham Potter, people like that who have been, not been top players. They, they, they've ended up being around football from such a young age in a management capacity. And then everyone goes, oh, you know, they've burst on the scene. Like Mourinho burst on the scene. Graham Potter burst on the yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. You know, Graham Potter was in Sweden for seven years, you know, before he 
got the Brighton job. Yeah. You know, he, he's kind of found himself. Yeah, he's earned his stripes yeah, there, over there. Somewhere really. else. Perfect. Outside, out of mind. into the Premier the League like, or Championship and kind of made a name for himself then. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that you take away from <clears throat> when you do your badges, wherever you've been uh, a, a top player, a, a, someone that's just had a, a, a generous career, someone that's never played, is that there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right, there's no, you can't see and go 4-4-2 four, four, is better yeah, than 4-3-3. Yeah. Three, three. Mm. So, I mean, there's no, you know, as long as you back, you back what you, you think, what you're thinking, then that's all they want to see. So, for instance, when you're in the dressing room, that, that scenario, you can do whatever you want. As, but as long as you believe in what you're saying and you're, and, you're, and afterwards you go, well, I said this because I feel, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. what So, what know. was the feedback you got? Off that session, Sids, or, or some of the sessions that day, was there yeah. anything that sort of oh, surprised was, was, you? Yeah, or? there were silly little things. Something like, um, like the, ta- the I done a tactics board once, and I didn't have the football one there. Do you the, I put all the players up there, and then I, I left the football one at the bottom. I didn't pick that one up. But the football magnet, or yeah, something. You that's mean. it. Because yeah, yeah, they yeah. saying you still got to use that because although you're thinking they might know what you're saying, they need to visually see as well. Yeah. Just little things like that. And you can actually see why now, and again, we've got this list in front of us of all these players, even the ones that haven't had a great managerial career, and, well, I'll say not great, but not as good as the other ones. We've got Gary Neville, Wayne Rooney company, Gerard, um, done well at Rangers, but struggled at Villa, Sheringham, Shearer. You can see why some players just get it and some players just don't. You just, it just... I think they, it just navigates you to a path where you find your way to either do it or you find your way to go, it's, this isn't really for me. It's not just analysis of a game as well. Like A lot of those players that you mentioned there, you can still have that unbelievable analysis and be able, maybe this is the point of view of being a pundit as well and have those opinions, but managing isn't just that. Mm. But also I think, I think knowing your weaknesses is what's so strong for a manager as well. Like If you know your weaknesses, you get someone in on your staff, if you're able to bring someone in on your staff, um, to, who, who counteracts the weaknesses that you've got. Like if I was thinking to myself, if I, my weakness might be, you know, I might be a bit too personable with the players. I might be a bit too much like their mates. I would drag someone in who's aggressive who would be yeah. very much on the front foot now nah, these need to be told and I'll just kind of let him go in and sometimes and say, Sean like, you know one of those Malcolm where I'm just like, you know <laughs> if it's in my head I think they need it I, it might it might not be my style but I go right I'm going to send him in today mm-hmm. just to let these boys know that they're fucking you know they're not fucking about and this and that and then maybe I'd be the one to put their arm around and reverse it a little bit you know I think that was when I started thinking about whether it be a manager, I think you have to kind of know your weaknesses. And I think that I would be quite good at that. I'd know what I'm good at and know what I'm bad at and kind of get people hopefully around me to, to counteract those weaknesses. Do you think the coaching badges could be a good breeding ground for working out good managing partnerships? So whereas you had to do those things together, that's, do you suddenly then I think that's where they come from. That's where they get, 100%. That's where they get their number two or their assistant manager or their, or their coaching team. 100%. Yeah. Because you don't want someone that's, that's the same as you. Mm. Do you know what I mean, you want someone that's going to be a little bit different. And so, yeah, Patrick Vieira, for instance, like Osh, who runs the Wales course, Patrick Vieira brought him in as, as number two. Yeah. So he's literally done his badges. Who better than someone who's kind of who's coaching you through yeah. your badges to be your number two at Crystal Palace? So is it almost when you go do those badges, there could be a session there which is almost not like a speed dating sort of thing, but you should try and experience these sort of sessions with as many people as possible yeah. and actually be thinking along those lines yeah. of, well, look, if I do go ahead in this, who do I want to yeah. take with me? Well, that's where they're clever because they do that. So you're there for a week. You might be there for a week or it might be broken up over a, a year where you've got to do blocks <clears throat> over the course of the year. And they'll make you be with, you You would have worked over that course, that period, you would have worked with everyone in that room. Everyone. Because sometimes you can get a little bit of a click. So if you get there and you see a lot of, players that you've known you'll end up just gravitating to them and not really the ones that you don't know so they make you go to see everyone and work with everyone you go do you know what actually I really liked him but then I wonder what that dynamic is where one of you's got to decide because it unless I'm you know I'm just trying to think here I don't think there's ever been a situation where there's two managers on exactly the same level right one always has to drop to assistant Maybe that's something in the future. But that these I don't know if it's even allowed in football. But but, the, yeah, the, but these are all aspiring to be a manager. So for instance, if I'm on if I'm on that course and Crouchy, so for instance, gets a job and he says, "Look, I've got a job at wherever, Leicester." Yeah. Do you want, yeah. to, come, do you want to come and be my assistant? Yeah. I haven't been offered a job, and I'm thinking, "Well, you know what? It's a great way to start." 
to get my foot in the door, learn the ropes as well. And then when it's time for me to then maybe go, I love this role, or I'll go and do this one by myself, or you might just build up a dilemma mm. you go, mm. we're the dream team anyway. Yeah. And a lot, of these, a lot of these relationships happen on these courses. You'd be That's like, we work really well together. Uh, would you like to kind of come work with, with mm. me? Yeah. And, and a lot of them kind of start there, you know? And, and so you have to validate your uh, license every kind of two years. Yeah. Uh, and you go back and there'll be a manager giving a talk. I remember Eddie Howe did a, did a, did a talk when yeah. we were there. Yeah. It, I thought I'd like this summer. Eddie Howe, then you, like Guardiola's been back, done it, you know, to the yeah. Wales one. And um, Mikel Arteta would come in and talk about kind of their system and how they kind of went in. And uh, the Eddie Howe one was really interesting yeah. when he kind of said yeah. when, he, when he went into like, Bournemouth and... Um, you know, what he needed to do, who he needed to sign and how he needed to kind of win over the players having been a player himself, mm. you know? The, the mad thing is as well, you, like all these top players, and again, we've, just, we've touched on it before. Like, so I remember talking to Frank uh, Lampard and, and Stevie as well. That first initial meeting, you can plan in your head, you can have the script in your head of what you're going to say to them when you get in that dressing room or um, the team meeting room before training. And... You, they're just fucking dead nervous. More than, the most nervous they've ever been. They'd rather be on a, on a football pitch or taking a penalty in a World Cup. They all said that first meeting, they, you just you just shit yourself. You're just hoping to just get it through and not sound a bit authoritative. And then you then you just sort of get used to the environment, get used to the next meeting, and then get used to the next one. But actually, that first one is just horrific. And also the interview process as well. I didn't realise until I went on the coaching that how I, I just thought. You know, if you were like a manager or something and you uh, see if you're Stephen Gerrard, right, and you want to get the villa job, you go, well, you walk in and go, oh, well, I'm Stephen Gerrard. <laughs> you get the shot, right? Like, no, it's a full PowerPoint presentation plan about the future of the club, about the philosophy, about your philosophy, about you, you know, what players you want to play and how you want to play in formation. The whole thing is put into this kind of document and, presentation about otherwise you don't you don't get jobs and it's a more rounded proposal than perhaps you think and i guess that depends on what league you're going into as well as to the different jobs that you have to represent that you can yeah, yeah, yeah. do i remember dice i'm sure it was sean dice anyway talking about when he was managing um lower league he was having to at one point talk about what sandwiches he has in the in the boardroom, that kind of thing, that level of that level detail. of detail yeah. exactly right well brendan rogers had a, a, when he came to liverpool he had a, he had a document like that Put it down and said, "This is my, this is my plan." Yeah. That's went, pretty good. I went yeah. through the entire. So he got that from Jose, to, definitely. To Liverpool, yeah. He well, done he that to done, me. Yeah. 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 Jose had the big book, did he? Yeah. Like, yeah. And he was the first one to do it back then. He was just like, "Look, this is this is Chelsea Football Club," and it was just literally from day one. The training sessions all mapped out, all done already. And that's that that's, is impressive. That's, isn't it? that's yeah. like the now, the bit now. parched, like. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, well, that is the now and now, isn't it? Everyone, I mean, everyone seems to be doing that now, but I mean, that's that's part and parcel of it. You know, but also there are players as well, like who have, you know, Zidane, Pep, Xavi, Arteta, Diego Simeone, obviously, that have been top, top, top players who have gone in and had tremendous success mm. as managers as well. So I guess the question that always gets asked is is kind of, do you, do you think you need to have played the game at a high level to become a manager? I do you think, think, think you need to? No, it's been proven oh, that you don't yeah. need to. I think it, it. I think there's there'd be elements that it would help you. It would, that's a fact. If you've experienced certain tournaments or certain cup finals, or you know, you know, whatever. I quite, think you need to be a kid, specific type of character. You know but I mean? yeah, like, ultimately, I think you need to be like, um, you know, single-minded. You need to have a tremendous amount of belief. I think if you if you've cut if you haven't played the game to to a high level, I think you need to have an amazing amount of belief in your ability to manage. Mm. You know, to because you'll always have that kind of inferior, inferiority complex. I think people like Mourinho don't have that, <laughs> right? No, exactly. He, he literally the furthest away from that. You know, has tremendous amount. Of yeah, and the one thing you boys seem to keep coming back to with the badges is this this thing of communication. It seems to be much mm. more of a. It's either a skill that you didn't necessarily have as much when you were a player, but suddenly have to learn and be able to go into a, a dressing room with a bit of authority and a bit of something about you. Or you need to have had it and, and harness it. But also, it. there's ways of doing it. You can be an authoritative one where you can go in and go... Because you can't... It's impossible to keep 25 players happy, right? <clears throat> so you need to be able to deal with, first of all, going, right, I know 15 like me and 10 probably fucking hate me, 
right? And, I, and I, they're probably slagging me off in the dressing room and being shit. But I, I've just got to accept that. If you can't accept that, first of all, well, you can't go in the job. Then the next thing is, when you said about communication, are you going to be authoritative and go, right, this is what we're doing, you're doing it my way, right? Or is it going to be a bit of empathy around it as well? So, is it, and again, they all work. They all work there's nothing to some wrong, degree. That's it. There's, yeah. no, there's nothing wrong. Yeah. That's why I think keeping you know at Chelsea now, like keeping those players happy and all, like trying to trying to balance that yeah. situation. Like, yeah. you know, they're slagging you off. <laughs> you know, Chilwell, Sterling, you know all the all the all the ones that are in the bomb squad or have been in the bomb squad. You know that they they think you're a complete twat. Mm. So I mean, they 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 they're slagging you off. There's no. Like no one's naive enough to think that they're not, mm. um, and how you manage that, and they could be big characters in the dressing room, you know, you could be you could be alienating a lot of the dressing room. They might have a big influence. Tom Cleverley, how yeah. how did you think he would have done before a ball was kicked this season? Well, I, we had Troy on the pod, didn't we? And yeah. we were talking to him about Tom, but yeah, I, I obviously he's had a great run at the time of recording this. Yeah. <laughs> We're unbeaten. It looks good. And he looks great. And something's clicked and something seems to be working. And, you know, I don't know how much he... I assume he's getting on with the owners well enough, hence why he's still got a job. But you can't argue with the results, can you? And I spent a little bit of time with him in the summer. And yeah. um, it was really interesting, actually, like, kind of listen to what, to what he was saying. And it all sounded really, really like, really good. Like, I was, I was thinking, I think they'll have a good season this mm. year. But... You, you never know, do you? You know, no. like, it, no, you it, never he's know. Done, a, mate, done a great job. But honestly, I didn't think, I didn't think he would be this good. Really? And and I didn't think, like, what he represents as a manager, because then all this character comes out, and then I think where it works really well is where the club suddenly can help make that identity. Like, he, he's a fully-fledged manager to me now. Mm. He was playing for us a season nah, or two it? ago. Yeah. And, and he was always a great captain-like figure but you don't know if it's going to translate. And he has this sort of, maybe it's patronising reductive to do it like this, but he's got this sort of Scott Parker thing about him that I really like. Mm. He's sort of like British, but he's a great player and he, he's, it feels like he hasn't had to change too much, but it's working. He doesn't look like he's changed his personality too much. Yeah. Well, I think, I think he looks older all of a yeah. sudden. Like you, do, you kind of like, like, people see through it, don't they? Mm. If you're trying to be someone you're not, Mm. that's why I always thought to myself about with me when I, if I was going to do it like I, you can't change too much because people know that's not you mm. and it doesn't if it doesn't fly forever I, even with this job I think like you know none of us are being anyone different whereas you know a lot of people kind of in this job mm. are pretending to be someone different do you know what that's I mean and I think it doesn't last if you if you yeah. portray something that's yeah. not not you, I think people can see that when we're set Saturday now, it's all these are our characters. Mm. Same when I do the one with me and Abby's podcast, like that's her, that's me. People can't believe that dynamic's true, <laughs> but that is our life. Do you know what I mean? And uh, but that's things why like it that. It doesn't, and it doesn't. It wouldn't it's work if it, it's authentic, yeah. right? And it wouldn't exactly. work if it if it wasn't. And I think it's very true in management as well. That said. Uh, who wants to do the first team talk for everyone listening then? Five minutes, go. It's 4-4 four, four, <laughs> fucking two. <laughs> All right, should we get into a few messages then, lads? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so got, got one on the old scoobering uh, shout at the moment. Um, this is from, uh, it's from Gary. Apparently, uh, a big fan of the pod, amazed that you've brought scubaing to the mainstream. A few years ago, I participated in my local triathlon. The first section of the competition was, of course, swimming in a pool full of uh, competitors. I was in a fairly even group of three swimmers in my lane. When it was getting towards the final couple of lengths, the guy in front of me uh, wasn't going quick enough and I wanted to overtake. I didn't think I had enough in the tank to go uh, full front crawl steaming past him. So I thought it'd be a great idea to scuba him. And it worked. Would have been a very awkward if I'd came up early and headbutted his groin. He didn't realise that I'd uh, I'd he, that he'd actually been scuba until afterwards uh, when he got out of the pool and we're at the bikes getting ready to set off. He came up, uh, running up to me, and said, "Oi, um, you've done done less lengths than me." Uh, I jumped on my bike and laughed to myself, shouting back, "I went underneath for you, you slow fucker!" <laughs> <laughs> and cycled off. <laughs> He was a big fella too, so I went quick as I could. He did eventually catch me up uh, on the bike and zoomed past with his middle finger up and left me for dust. Uh, needless to say, he definitely beat me, but I feel like I was the real winner now. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, Sam, a aka, get me, 
Get in me, Gary. Oh, God. That could mean anything. <laughs> Sam, get a.k.a. In get in me, Gary. Either that's a popular catchphrase that we don't know, or the first thing that comes to my mind is yeah. something we probably shouldn't be talking about. Yeah, agreed. Either <laughs> way. Um, all Christ. I'm imagining oh, with that is Tom Fordyce. Uh, the great Tom Fordyce. Because yeah. I can imagine him being slow in the pool, but fast on the bike. 100%. Uh, it might well have been Fordyce. That. <laughs> I really hope it was. Yeah. But... um. You know, on the triathlon, I do find that a mental sport because it's, it is literally three different mm. sports in one. It's like competitively having football, tennis, and swimming. Like but Ultimately, it's, it is fitness, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's not like playing, you know, table tennis, you know, maths equations, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. a poem. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's pretty, it's pretty, you know, you've got to be fit. But I've struggled with the triathlon because it's too, it is too different. Like, you got, I, I'm really into football, right? But yeah. it doesn't mean then if there was a sport that had a bit of football, a bit of rugby, a bit of basketball together. Mm. It's like you're into one of those things, aren't you? It's mm. like, it, yeah. how can you be really into a sport which is so three totally different like you'd be really mm. into the swimming wouldn't you or really well, into would the you, running, would, would running you really swimming into and cycling, cycling. cycling. Yes. would you be more by or try I don't know mate I don't know because because I think like in that situation <laughs> in that particular situation in the triathlon I'm sort of like find the bike riding bit quite good mm. running I can't be asked with I'll just watch the bike bit the transition of it all I find baffling as well. You yeah. know where they've got to quickly get changed yeah. out yeah. of there. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that alone is should be a sport, shouldn't yeah. it? They yeah. should be... If you're going to rate those three sports as a race, you might as well have someone doing score for best sort of costume change. Costume halfway, change. Yeah, halfway no, you're through. right. Yeah, I'm yeah, a fan. Yeah. I'd like to give it a go. Yeah. Would you? A yeah. triathlon? Yeah. Seriously. My daughter but, used to do them. It was good. I used to go and watch her. But what bits, what bits would you be good at on that? Uh... I'm all right on the bike. I think I'm the bike right would kill bike. me. Uh, to swim and a run, I'd be all right. Swimming, I think it might. I think it'd be bike, run. Sw- I, can, I'm, I can swim. I haven't swum for a long time, but it's the long distance swimming, isn't it? It's tough. Though. Is it always the same order? That I don't know. Yeah, that's you a good point. S- because trying to ride a bike completely wet is problematic, isn't it? It's could be. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if it is in a particular order. I don't know. Must be. I just find that I do. It's just an odd. I know it's a thing that a lot of people do. I just find it odd that it's three different, totally different sports as a sport. We don't really do it with anything else. Well, I haven't said that. Um, Swim cycle. You get on the bike wet. Swim cycle run. So you get on the bike wet. That's what I mean. That's not easy, is it? Unless you dry your gooch properly as well, like on the bike. <laughs> chafing. That's all sorts of problems. No, yeah, but it is. Chafe. Sid, it I, chafe. Try it. Go have a swim in your local uh, like leisure centre, right? I've not got a hair on me. It's, it's, it's like a dolphin. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, we oh, discussed yeah. this. Otter's eyebrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How are you getting on with the Philips 1360 or whatever it was, the one blade? Yeah, the one blade. Isn't yeah, it yeah. extraordinary? I know this sounds like an advert, <laughs> but it's just like, I did actually give it a bash the other Have you day. Really? Yeah, yeah, before I went on holiday and I just thought, yeah. what a yeah. fantastic piece of equipment. Yeah. Are, you, are you smooth? Well, doesn't sound like I'm as smooth well as... No, 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 no one could be as smooth as Stephen Sidwell, mate. He is like a young dolphin. <laughs> a young dolphin? <laughs> Not even an old one, mate. It's smoother than that. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of mad sports, right? We had someone write in say that they joined an ultimate Frisbee team. Oh, great. Uh, hoping to meet people. And I said... I don't know. It's what an underrated sport, that, I think. Are you into it as well? well we, they... ca- we caned it last week, if I'm honest. On holiday? We, we, no, last week. A... Oh, on the podcast? Yeah. Really? No, no, don't well, you think it's good? I just think, I, I don't know. I think people that take Frisbee seriously. I think I like Frisbeeing, definitely. But I think if you're taking I, it I seriously. I think it's knackering, but don't you think the idea of the game, I probably don't understand the rules here, but Ultimate Frisbee to me is like a bit like... Um, Almost like netball or something, or like America. So if you have the frisbee, you have to stop. But then you'll lo- imagine lobbing it towards someone and, and running on and catching it perfect. Mm. Well, well, I feel a do bit you not think that would be fun? Yeah, no, 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 it's I definitely it. fun. It's, just, uh, it's a park game. It's not a sport, yeah. sport to go it's on. It's a red Tuesday flag to me. If I'm, in, if I'm out and someone says, oh, what do you, what, what do, you do? And they go, oh, well, I've, I've played frisbee on the weekends. I'm you don't better. think they're a bit of a bell <laughs> <laughs> Do you not? <laughs> 
I don't know. I think <laughs> I, I, I you don't mean, think they're the villains. You are the villain. No? This is it. I can see where this is all going, isn't it? You know, are you wearing shin pads when you're playing frisbee or all of that sort of thing? But I do think. I've, I can't say I'll partake in it, but I'm very interested. Oh, are you? But there are some oh, sports I have no sake, interest Chris. in. You know when okay. you see that? No, because you know when you see... I think everyone should you do what they want to do. You would an ultimate frisbee team. Really? Where are you at with Quidditch? Well, that's, that's from Harry Potter, isn't it? Yeah, but they do... You can... What you can do... Oh, well, shut fuck up. off. There's you no can't, way. Don't even start you can't. There is that. No There's way. not people out there doing Quidditch. There are. I'm what, telling what you now, not... there'll be someone listening to this that goes and plays Quidditch at the weekend. What, what, like, you, what are they doing? Brooms. What, yeah, but like on a motorised broom or like on a bike? Obviously, you can't fly them, can you? Well, it's a Nimbus, isn't it? They're the best one. Is it? That's the biggest brand in the game. Nimbus 3000. Yeah, but there's not people out there playing Quidditch. They, they are. They, 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 well, they no, shouldn't be. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> it's not. They shouldn't be. Seriously. Have you not seen it? No, that's not, that's not true. Like, have you got your phone? It's, it's not true. true. Is there a real thing? Yeah, type in YouTube. Just see if Quidditch... No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm all for, I don't think but I don't by the way I'll I review frisbee I don't know I, th I think there's something quite cool about frisbee do you th I think I can sort of imagine the kit if I'm sitting it. down and someone says oh I'll do frisbee and someone says oh I'll play Quidditch no 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 I'm they're not for up, me I'm walking not for here they are here they are look at yeah. them oh they look like big fellas actually yeah have a look on if you type in YouTube because then you'll get a video won't you 25,000 people in 40 countries play Quidditch. It's a, it's a, it's going to be the new paddle. Hold on a minute. This is... Wow. Yeah. I thought, honestly, I thought paddle was a bit lame when I first heard Hold it. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I mean, these look like they're like proper like hurling men. Things, you knock these sports. Then. I, just, I, just, I just thought they were all dressing up as like Harry mate. Potter. So, here we go. Let's have a look. There we go. So Quidditch, there you go, they get the balls and then they have the broomstick between their legs. Do they actually have a broomstick between their legs? Yeah. Yeah, look. Look at oh, him. Look, look at him. Have look a look at him. Now, look, this is Alex. He's a beater. Why is he a beater? <clears throat> well, that's one of the roles, isn't it? It's very physical. Look, see? So you get... They, there you go. So you put the broom between your legs and then one of them is searching around for the golden snitch. How is this a thing? It's massive, mate. Quidditch is massive. Beaters, bludgers. I, don't, I think... Do you know where they play this? Clapham Junction. I, I knew they'd I knew they'd do it in Clapham. I, on that little on the on the green on the there. Green. Yeah, no, I knew they'd be doing it. You know. I think we shouldn't knock these sports. I do think because... Honestly, I think don't knock until you tried it, and that's that's why I think Listen, we should, my issue I, is I, I right, think we should game, go out and play a little bit. I and get you, decide. I get you. The game actually looks all right. Like I'll be honest with you, that game looks all right. It's the way they've got brooms between their legs. Yeah, can't have you can't, they. They're not flying anywhere, are they? It's not. That's not. I like the game. I can see the ball sport throwing it through the thing. They get all that, and like you know, when you touch someone, they've got to drop the ball. Get yeah. all that. Don't have you don't need a broom. Don't need a you're right, the broom is slightly red, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Because you're not <laughs> flying. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's it's an unnecessary... <laughs> Maybe that's the bit that stops the sport yeah. being... For me, they're not growing it with that. No. Nah. I mean, I see people on Clapham Common <laughs> with a broom between their legs pretending they're flying at the moment. I... Well, look, let us know. If there is a sport Say you no. think that uh, the lads... It, we all know it takes a lot to entertain Steve Sidwell and mm. Crouchy's sceptical just because oh, I am uh, not entertained. Takes a slightly old school view to things, but I'm more open minded and I think things like frisbee and Quidditch, I, f I think they do have a place in <laughs> oh, <laughs> and common. I know they do. <laughs> so let us know if you'd like us to come along and try it. Set <laughs> done over anywhere else. <laughs> send us an invite. Peter.crouch at acast.com. All right. Should we, do you mind if I just do a quick dog 11 to finish? Is that all right, lads? Dog in uh, Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone let a dog onto the pitch at one of my six side sessions in the footy group that I'm in. And the organiser got an email saying that no dogs were allowed. That led us to start naming dog-related players. Uh, <laughs> so he's come up with a dog 11. Um, it's from Martin, Martin Shaw. Uh, he says puddings are massive. Um, Alison Barker. Uh, <laughs> Rio, Rio Ferdinand. Um, Des Dogwalker. <laughs> <laughs> John Terrier, uh, Dog Collar Hendy, uh, Paul Pugba, 
uh, Ross Barkley, uh, Gabby Ablo Ab Ab Lab Ablong Labrador, <laughs> <laughs> Gabby Agblom Labrador, Agblom Labrador. Labrador. Yeah, okay, sorry. Harry Canine, mm. um, Stan Border Collymore, uh, Emil Husky, uh, and the manager is Kenny Doglish. <laughs> Uh, it's fantastic, Martin. Martin, well, well done. done. No All Steve right. Sidwell in that one. For no, the first time oh, hold ever. on a minute. For the first time <sighs> ever. That can't be right. Uh, oof. Wow. That's not good, is it? Hold on a minute. Shit. Could this finally be an 11 that Steve Sidwell doesn't work for? No, it's not, it's not, it cannot be true. It cannot be true. But Steve Pitwell. Steve Sitwell. Steve Sitwell. That Sitwell. works. Well, that's very Sitwell. Sitwell. Good boy. <laughs> Steve Sitwell. <laughs> Good boy. That was good. <laughs> See you next time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>